That wouldn't be good. Coming to uh, any sort of uh, a seat that allows you to feel the base of your pelvis, like a pretty solid anchor. And some space for the, the spine to have some ease. So I'm sitting uh, in a, an easy cross, easy is probably not the right word to describe it, but a, a cross-legged posture. And as I look down, I can see which leg is in front. And as we spend a few minutes here, I might wanna change the cross of the leg. If you're sitting in a chair, then your feet are on the floor with that perhaps as being one of your anchors. And so let's just uh, soften the gaze or close the eyes even, if it's comfortable for you to allow the eyes to drape and the hands can be resting just anywhere along the thighs or they might be clasped in your lap. And so the first act is just to be here, which is an invitation to start to pay attention to the body. Just the physical body to start with, just noticing that you're sitting, sitting and knowing that you're sitting. And however that is, it might be the, just the feeling of, of weight, a little bit of settling down through the base of the pelvis or the feet. Just an overall awareness of your, your body landing here in this posture. And then uh, you may notice or scan through the entire body, just not really aggressively, but just to, <clears throat> excuse me, go through and see if there's an area where you might be feeling some tension. Whatever's easy, whatever's the first thing that pops up, the jaw, somewhere in the face, maybe it's the gut. Just helpful to know where we, we hold tension, our own tension, or maybe also the, the collective stress of others in our bubbles or in our thoughts. And all of that will be manifested somewhere in the body. We'll just see where that feels predominant for you. See if anything happens with that constriction or tightness, just by noticing that it's, it's here and being okay with that. And then move your awareness to the field of breath, breathing and knowing that you're breathing. Just your natural breath. This is a class where we do move. I do some cueing with the breath. Just finding a, a rhythm that's steady and energetic. Notice where you're feeling the breath in your body right now, whether that be tip of the nose, chest or belly. And breathing isn't the best thing for everybody. Sometimes breathing focus can create more anxiety. So if it's not breathing, then maybe 
Try something else, try sound, Just awareness of hearing. Background sounds, humming, buzzing, or appliances in your house, pet. These are just anchors to bring you into present so that we can be present to the experience that, that's happening now and have a little more softness and space around whatever it is. Start to come back to the entire body, expand the awareness into the entirety of your shape. And if you are okay to notice breathing, see if you can find it in the, in the back body as well. So in between the shoulder blades, in the lower back and starting to invite a little more dignity into this posture. Feeling a draw up through the crown of the head in opposition to the pull down through the tailbone, down to the center of the earth. A few more centimeters of space along the spine. Let's rub the palms together now. Start to wake it up. And rest the palms over the eyes, just cupping them there, feeling some transmission of heat and energy and ease into the eyes. And take the palms, space the palms out to the temples and make a few circles there, massaging in out towards the hairline, the upper cheekbone. Slide your thumb pads between your eyebrows and draw that area up. And then smooth across the forehead a couple times with your thumb pads. <laughs> there goes somebody's uh, car alarm going out front. So spreading the arms open wide and pressing the palms away and just starting to light up underneath the Arms, let's turn and look out over the left shoulder, wrist area. Let's take a deep breath in there. Exhale back through center and have a look out over the right shoulder. Press out through that palm. Come back to center, just keeping the chin level with the floor. Bring the fingertips down towards the floor and make a little fist there and squeeze. Press out through the back of the wrist. So just stretching out the wrists and the hands a little bit. Do a few loose circles with the wrists. You can make a, a tiny little fist, not gripping at all in both directions. And then bring the fingertips to the tops of the shoulders and hug the elbows back in space a little bit. Take three breaths here, getting a little bit taller and finding some containment through the core. Or you can cradle your head with your hands, with your fingertips, pulling that occipital ridge at the very base, just up a little bit, one more breath there. And then exhale, just take the chin towards the chest. You can squeeze the elbows to the ears. Let's not round the whole spine, just feeling that stretch in the neck. Draw the elbows up towards the ceiling on the inhale, squeeze towards the ears and then exhale, chin towards the chest. Try to just isolate in the upper back, that tightness in the thoracic spine, elbows lift and then chin towards the chest. One more time, lift it up and then just spread the arms into a few big circles. Out, maybe cross one elbow underneath the other. Just clearing out, opening the drapes, doing a few cobweb type movements, opening and closing the hands, taking one elbow under and then the other elbow under. And then bring your right hand down and reach the left arm straight up. Bring fingertips towards the, the floor. 
a little bit behind your hip, but reach straight out with the left arm, straight up more so than, than the side bend. That'll just happen. We'll heavy down through the left sits bone. Let's take three more breaths here. And that's one, two, and three. Draw yourself back up, bring that left arm forward and start to take the right arm back. So come into a little twist, have your right hip bone moving forward so the twist isn't so much in the hips. Soften the shoulders away from here. So a little bit of core. And just let your neck go to where it feels natural. One more inhale. And exhale, come back through center. Keep the left arm forward and wrap the right arm underneath. Give yourself a hug or bring into eagle arms and lift the elbows up. And then exhale. Let's take it now into more of a curve. So let it be more like a cat. Draw the navel back. One more inhale. Exhale. Good. Let's bring the hands behind the back. You stretch the palms away. Palms face towards the ceiling. Maybe the thumbs come a little bit closer together. We're not trying to dive right into our, our deepest place here. It's a little more of the, the work and squeezing the shoulder blades together to strengthen in the upper back. And then exhale, hands to the front of the shins and scoop and hollow one more time into that cat shape. Let's come up and either adjust if you're sitting in a chair or lean back and change the cross of the legs. Just balancing out the hips a little bit. And come back to take a seat here. Let's take the left fingers down now, a little bit behind the hip and reach the right arm straight up. And keep reaching up. You might look up in that direction as well. And play with that, looking forward and looking down towards the left hand, grounding heavy through the right hip. Any little movements in the neck that feel good here. We're just waking up Sunday morning. We're all together practicing from our own spaces, but still with intentions of wishing each other well being. Exhaling into the side stretch for one more inhale. Good. All that length draw straight up. Bring the right arm forward now and move the left arm back. The left arm doesn't come up, have to come up to shoulder height at all. You can keep it pretty low. You can even keep it on the ground, but lengthen out, create more space across the, the breastbone there for three, two, just a little bit of wringing out a cloth action in the abdomen, the ribs for one. And as you come forward, bring the left elbow under the right elbow and give yourself a hug. Staying here or eagle shake the arms. Wherever you are, find the breath in the back body. Take a deep breath into the back of the heart. Lift the elbows a little higher and maybe the hands can move slightly forward. And then chin to chest, exhale. Let the whole spine come into that nice flexion. Inhale, come up. And then open the arms again, reach them around behind the back. Draw the thumbs a little closer together for a squeeze, but don't clasp the hands back there. Reach the palms a little higher towards the ceiling if you have any room. And then exhale, shins, hands, curve it out. Good, and then let's come off of the seat and over to the hands and knees. And so the padding there, Have the strap just up towards the front of your mat. And coming onto hands and knees, come high on the fingertips. And just start to do a few barrel rolls with your whole spine. It doesn't, it's not so important the distance between your hands and your, your knees. You can have a longer or a shorter table. Just start to get some mobility into that rib cage. 
Just roll it all around the head, neck, and shoulders. Can just follow along with the rest of it. And do a, a few rounds in each direction, maybe shift the weight forward and back. And just playing with, with all of this. So I'm up on fingertips for a little bit of height. And try changing that up a bit, bring the palms down. And do different shapes with the palms so or position so you can turn the fingers away. Turn them in towards each other. <laughs> and uh, I'm loving that horn. I think it's perfect. They pick this time of day. Fingers towards each other. And see how it feels for you to bring the fingers more in the direction of your knees. A little more like that. Just to within your own range of movement, a little bend at the elbows really carefully. So smaller movements. And then let's come back to either fists or palms or, and now more of a traditional tabletop shape and we'll move into some breathing with cat and cow, draw the shoulder blades together now. That same little squeeze and the tailbone will follow. Keep the belly lifted and then exhale, start to draw the ribs in and let the head go. Just take a couple breaths here and roll out the jaw. And then breathe in to come forward. Widen across the collarbones and exhale, pick up the belly, let the head go. Let's do four of those, breathing in and breathing out. Try to follow your breath. Inhale and exhale. Next time you come through the cat, give yourself a little more height with the fingertips and with the spine or the belly lifted, step the right leg out. So we're going to come into a gate pose, the whole right foot on the floor, right ankle, right knee, right hip, and then bring it on up with the hands to the hips right there. Loop the shoulders around, squeeze the shoulder blades together or squeeze the elbows together here just to get that sense of opening in the front body. And at the same time, keep some awareness through the back body. Let's slide the right arm down and reach the left arm straight up again. And that same reaching up, coming into a little bit of a side stretch on the exhale, lifting underneath the thigh and even underneath the foot. Feel the arch is there. Come back up through center. Let's tip it over and stretch out towards the left without coming all the way down. Pull the arms away from each other or the fingertips energetically and then bring it back up. So we're using those lateral muscles. Come all the way over, take a little bit of a reach, press your left shin to the floor, draw the fingers away from each other. Inhale, come back up. And stay here, take another exhale. And then inhale through center and maybe tip your fingertips might come down, they might not. It's even a little more work to wrap the ribs around towards the ceiling if you're staying lifted. Ground through the right foot. One more inhale. Exhale into the side stretch. And come back through center. Bring the fingertips down. And slide the right leg behind and float it up. So you can keep the toes lifted, not too high. Just press out through that heel, lengthen out, drop the outer right hip, and maybe stretch the left arm forward as well. And go for those three breaths, the ujjayi wave in and out through the nose. The posture is not static. The breath is prana, life force, energy moving through the shape. One more inhale. And exhale, bring the left hand down, draw the right knee in towards the chest and give it a squeeze. And then place the right foot back down. Let's curl the toes under for a moment here and sit back towards the heels. And stretch out the bottoms of the feet. 
fingertips on the floor or bring the hands to the thighs to what feels like therapeutic stretch that you can tolerate. Just come back to the breath. You could take the higher knees, keeping a neutral pelvis for three. Exhaling for two. And one. Hands, fists, or fingertips come down. Bring the tops of the feet down. Go ahead and sit back either into child's pose for three breaths or come back to sit on the heels for a little more of an ankle stretch for two. And one. We don't spend too long in postures in this class. We just keep it moving with the breath, giving the, the mind a break. Back to cat and cow, draw the chest through, inhale. And exhale, take it into cat. Inhale to cow, squeeze the shoulder blades and exhale, peel the belly up and back. Once more, breathe in and out. Keep that lift there and step the left leg out. And patting up the right knee and press the whole left foot to the floor. And from that lift in the belly, bring the hands to the hips or make fists around behind your low back. And press down through the foot. You can send the hips a, a little bit forward as the, as the tailbone drops down and lift underneath that inner thigh, left leg. Left arm draws down and right arm reaches up. And then exhale into a little side stretch. Take another in and out. Brown through the left foot as you come through center and reach it out through the right arm. Just on a diagonal, a bit of a side plank. Lateral muscles, ribs rolling towards the ceiling, creating more space. Cross the upper back. Inhale, come up and exhale into the side stretch. Inhale through and reach it out. Exhale, come up and over. This time optional to take it through and drop the right fingers to either touch the ground or just hover. Inhale, up and exhale. Good, back through center, take the hands down. Float the left leg around and straight back there. Lengthen out through the heel, look back for the toes, they're facing the floor. Coming into balance, the outer left hip. Nice and heavy, the frontal hip bones facing the floor. Right arm coming into the pose for three. Seeing what it's like to practice balancing. It's always a moving target. And exhale, bringing the limbs back in. Cow pose, inhale. And exhale, keep the hips high. Take it to have the hands way forward. Bring your chest towards the floor. It's coming into this little bit of a bow, a downward, more of a downward dog shape with the upper body. And know you can come here at any time. Just drawing the shoulder blades a little closer. Your forehead does not have to be down. Pulling back through the palms and the belly for one more inhale. And exhale, walk the hands back in. Go curl the toes under. Let's hover the knees for a moment. And turn the sauce of the elbows to face forward. Press right out to the fingertips. If your knees aren't lifted, that's okay. Just feel that that lift, that mindful intention towards strong belly and then keep the knees bent as you lift your hips up high. Sending the crown of the head towards the thumbs and the belly back towards the thighs, the backs of the legs. Just taking time with the hamstrings and let the right leg straighten out a little bit. The right heel drops. There's a deep bend in the left knee. Breathe in there and then exhale, switch. Right knee bends, left heel drops. 
Switching side to side. Move the hips a little there. Keep some even pressure through the palm, especially the inner palm to protect the wrists. And shifting forward to plank pose. Walk the hands so that your shoulders are over the wrist and just tap the knees down. And tap the knees down and narrow the elbows to lower an inch or two and then press it straight back up. Inhale. Exhale, lower an inch or two. Inhale. Crown of the head, lengthening away from the tailbone one more time, coming down and pressing straight back up and then in towards either a more traditional child's pose, sitting back towards the heels, or you can keep that hip high variation, more of an extended or puppy pose for three, two, and one, walk the hands back in. Tabletop shape, curl the toes under, lift the belly and maybe lift the knees. One more inhale. And then exhale to take it, <coughs> excuse me, up and back. Let's bring the big toes together and stretch the right leg back. You could do this from the tabletop shape as well. You could be down on that left knee. Open up the hip. Just keep the leg uh, reaching towards the ceiling for this one. Circle out the ankle a few times, making sure the right palm is really pressing. And then straighten it out again, bend through the knee. Start to draw forward and hug the heel really high up towards the bun and bring the shoulders over the wrist. So a three-legged plank. And then we'll step the right foot up, help the right foot to come up. Having something, sometimes uh, the blocks, usually if we're at the club, but you could have books as well. Something underneath your hands, press back through that left heel and then tap the left knee down and then stretch back through that heel, inhale. Tap the left knee down. Inhale, press back through the heel. Exhale, tap it down. And then walk the hands up towards that front thigh. Loop the shoulders up and down the back and settle in here for three. Squaring the hips relatively, pulling the right heel back for two. Lengthening the knee away from the outer right hip crease for one. And draw back a little more with the ribs now. So your legs are more right angles. And take the left arm up. And come into that side stretch again. Exhale. So you can keep your pose right here, or you can take it into more of the wrap of the left ribs around and take the outer left elbow or upper arm across that thigh. And maybe the palms come together. Or I like to do a, a fist, great fist in the left palm. And we're moving the uh, the heart center, center of the chest towards the hands in that direction. And just breathing here. Back knee can be down or you can lift it out and press out through the back heel for two. And one. Let's come back to tap the back knee down. Bring the hands down. <clears throat> Pick up the back knee again, so you're in a low lunge. Lean some weight into the palms. And we'll just step back to downward facing dog. If you prefer, you can take a break here in child's pose. If you're feeling a little more energetic, then shift forward to plank and we'll take it through a vinyasa. So bring the knees down. You can lower just a couple of inches and press straight back up. So if you're resting in child's pose, just stay there, enjoying your breath. Come all the way down if you're following along. Take the fingers wide and open into a cobra. And exhale, lower. Press the tops of the feet. We'll do that two more times in. And exhale, using the strength of the back body to Lengthen the front body as you breathe in. Exhale, lower. And we'll slide the hands back. 
Let's all meet in child's pose for two more breaths. This one. And two. Just playing with this balance of strength and ease, effort, less energy coming into downward facing dog. And bringing the big toes together and stretching the left leg back. So three-legged dog, I like to bend my right knee a little bit, helps to square the hips and then open up the left hip. And press out through that heel, a few circles through that ankle. Left palm especially presses. Straighten out again, three-legged dog. Left knee towards the chest, left heel towards the bum. So you're lifting up quite high to give you some space to assist with that step forward of the left foot. And grounding down through the left foot and press out through the right heel. You can use something underneath your, your hands on the inside of that foot or one on either side of the foot. Tap the back knee down, exhale and then press out through the back heel. Exhale to tap the knee, press out through the back heel. So this is to stretch the, the psoas, the front of the right iliopsoas hip area there, tap it down and then press out again so the hips don't lift too high. Tap that knee down, exhale, bring the hands to that front thigh. Your back toes can be curled under or you can bring the top of the back foot down. And if the top of the foot is down, then pull forward a little bit through the hip flexor, press back and reach the right arm up here. Take it into the side stretch. And this is great here, a little more of that lateral rib cage opening or bring it around into just a different variation. You can keep the arms straight or bring palms or left fist into right palm. Back knee stays down or lifts up for three, two, and one. Back through center. We're stepping back to downward facing dog. Pedaling it out here or coming to the knees or coming with me one more time through the flow, coming back to plank, tapping the knees, exhale to lower. Peel the heart forward in a cobra shape, either where we were before with the fingers wide or fingertips in line with the shoulders. Exhale, lower. You're coming to a height that does not cause any angst in your lower back. Looping the shoulders and squeezing the shoulder blades together once more and exhale, lower. Press the hands, low ribs, up and back. Let's meet in downward dog now. For three. Exhaling with an open mouth. Take a, another deep breath in here and stick the tongue out. Ha. Ah. High on the tiptoes, bending the knees and start to walk forward. You can remove the blanket that was underneath yourself there. If you have that band or strap something up towards the front of the mat, just have that handy there. You can have a deep bend of the knees, more like a little squat as you sway and catch opposite elbows or just let the, the arms dangle there. And take a breath in and tuck the chin towards the chest. Grab the, the strap as you start to curl up. Go slow, you don't have to keep the joints stacked as you get about two thirds of the way up, you're still looking down. And then your, your hips can start to move a little forward of the knees to come up and loop the shoulders down the back. Good, so have the 
uh, bend over top of the right shoulder. And if you don't have it, we'll uh, figure out another, just to open up the triceps. Let's reach the arms up. And we'll bring the right hand down. I'm just gonna come down a little so you can see me better. And then take a hold of the elbow with your hand, just move it back in space a little bit there. And so just breathing there. If you don't have the, the strap, you might stay there. One more inhale, let the tailbone have that weight and then open up the left arm. Turn the palm to face the floor or face back a little bit so you've got that internal rotation. Open it up, breathe in and exhale. Bring that arm around. And so the strap is here so that for most of us, me certainly, the hands don't come too close together. So the strap is there to move the elbows apart a little more and keep that softness in the knees. Let's actually bend the knees and send the chest forward. Take a little bow there. And then sit down and lift it up. Inhale. Exhale, bend the knees like you're coming in towards Katasana. You can tip your hips forward and then start to lift the heart and stand straight up again. Inhale. Exhale, releasing the strap. Just give a shoulder shrug, breathe in. And let it go. In and out. And switch it over second side, over to the left side. Bring the arms up, spin your triceps towards the back a little bit. So you can even use that kind of a rolling action uh, feeling. As you bring your left hand down. Yeah, just like that, rolling it in, holding the elbow. I'm just coming down onto the knees for the camera and holding the strap there. And you might just stay here. Lots of opening in the shoulder, tricep, or bring the right arm open, breathe in and flip the palm, opening and closing from the shoulder in and out, and then slide the arm around. If you have it, a band there and you find one end of it, and then move the elbows away from each other a little bit, bend the knees to help to do that a little more, keep the tailbone heavy. And then send the belly towards the thighs, stick your seat out. Inhale, just stay down a little bit, but lift the chest. Exhale, so strengthening the legs or ski squat here. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hips move back, belly's lifted. Inhale, and then exhale, come up, release that. Draw the shoulders in and let it go. Let's pause here, equal standing. Eyes open or closed and feel just as we did at the beginning. There we were sitting, here we're standing and knowing that we're standing, just feeling the energy of some of the heart opening, percolating. Whatever you feel is okay. We'll move on, Surya Namaskar A. Couple of those reaching up and fold, exhale. Inhale, come up halfway. And then exhale, belly to thighs, hands to floor. Step the left leg back and then the right leg back. Shift forward to tap the knees down all the way to the floor in one piece. Any of the back bends, the gecko shape or cobra, or if you're feeling an upward facing dog, then your knees will be lifted, arms a little on the straighter side. 
and then exhale back through to child's pose or downward facing dog. We'll take five breaths. And here, just with the aim to come back to the anchor of breath, sound, or the body. It's feeling me aliveness with some gratitude. One more full breath cycle. High on the tiptoes to travel. Take your time towards the front. Lengthen halfway, inhale and exhale, let it go. Press into the feet, come all the way up, breathing in. Trace the center line back to the heart, exhale. Pause and notice what's here. Release the arms, second round, breathing in. Exhale, dive forward. Halfway lengthen. Exhale, hands come down, right leg steps back. Shoulders don't go back though, they stay right over the wrists and then the left leg. Knees can tap down, elbows narrow to lower in one piece. Taking a back bend on the breath in and exhale, letting it go. Press up and back to your resting pose for five. Three. Being okay with whatever is here, adapting. Good, and then high on the tiptoes to walk forward, halfway lengthen, and exhale, let it go. And press into the feet, come all the way up. Inhaling and exhaling. Bring the hands to the hips and take a big step out with your left foot or to some way that you're facing um, the long side of your, your mat. We'll turn the right toes out. Line the right heel up with the back heel or the arch and take a pretty long stance. And just try bending through the front knee and then coming back up. And as you bend through the front knee, take a look at it, notice if it's dropping in. And so engage the buttocks, the glutes on that side to move it a little longer and out over the second toe and come back up. Ground through the back foot. The toes are just a little forward on that back leg and then open up the arms to warrior two. And then straighten both legs and straighten both arms, inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Warrior two, we're looking out over the right fingertips and reaching back through the left. Inhaling and exhale. And let's hold the pose here for three. Wrapping the right ribs. A little more space from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Last inhale. Drop the left arm down, reach the right arm up. Reverse warrior. And then straighten the front leg. Just keep it there for a reverse triangle pose. And then come back through. Let your left hand rest on your hip or around to your low back or wrap it around to the right hip and lengthen out a little here. You can adjust if you want to have a little shorter stride. You can walk the back foot in slightly. As we start to come in towards Trikonasana, the right ribs are wrapping under, lengthening there and dropping the right arm. So there's no effort to reach for the toes or we just want to be more or less with our rib cage lined up over our legs, our torso, not folded. Just let it be about opening up the heart. Just resting in your breath here, allowing for some ease. 
And then take it back up. Bring your feet to parallel. Just to start with, bring your hands back to your hips and then let the heels come in and turn the toes out to sit down. Feet, maybe a 45 degree angle, knees tracking over the second toe. And shifting the weight forward and back, maybe just appreciating your feet with all the little uh, bumps and whatever's there. I have a nice bunion, lots of walking, supporting your posture, seated or standing all day. Let's uh, sit a little lower. You can keep on using your arms for a bit of strength and space here, or bring the hands to the heart for three, and two, shoulders away from the ears, one, lift all the way up, reach up, bring the hands around. If it's available, you can hook the thumbs together and have your feet come back to parallel. Draw the belly in and fold forward halfway, lengthening out. Soften a, a little in the knees as you lift the inner thighs. And if it's natural for you to come down further, then just go ahead, arms away from the back. You can also use the strap uh, to hold between the, the hands can be nice, a little easier on the shoulders. If that's a better place uh, to do these heart openers for you. Maybe with a foot or so between the, the hands. Draw the belly in, press through the feet, and come all the way up. And how we'll put the strap aside if you had used that. And then turn the left toes out. I need a little longer stride for the warrior two. Bend through the front knee. Just working with the legs now. So straighten the front knee and then bend it. Straight is relative. A little bend at the, in that front knee all the time can actually strengthen the posture, keep it safer. So let's bend the knee and come into warrior two now. Let's come into the heart, stretch across the heart, front and back of the heart. Just finding the depth of the pose that's for you today, looking out over the left fingertips for three, grounding through the right heel for two, and one, drop the right arm down, reverse warrior, for another inhale, and then straighten out through the front leg, but keep the upper body in that reverse trikonasana. And then level it out here with the shoulders, maybe take a little shorter stride. Right hand can rest at the hip or wrap to the low back or all the way around to the left hip crease as you reach it out. And so, yeah, there's, this is a straighter front leg. We don't have the deep lunge, but there's still a little bend in the knee. And then drop the arm. One more inhale. Exhale, bring it up. I think I forgot something here. So the longer stance and back to warrior two, and try to balance it out a little bit. Do a, a few of these, the flying warrior, inhale and then exhale. In and out. Once more, inhale and exhale. And then parallel the feet, come to center, toes turn out and come into a squat. Move the thighs away. Let your shoulders come right up to hold your head. Lengthening the inner thigh, just enjoying, just kind of letting something go here. Let's drop the left shoulder and look over the right, pressing the Left inner thigh away, inhale, center, and exhale, switch. And come back through center, breathe in. And exhale to come up. One more time, parallel the feet. 
reach the arms around. You can just keep them flying back there or put the other thumb on top or bring in the bend for our last forward fold. Draw back and forward in two directions. Come halfway and stay. Lots of strength in this pose, strength and length, or come all the way down and let the arms reach away from the back. Just one, two, and three. Release the arms, bring your hands to the floor. If you like, take a walking hands forward action and Adjust your feet a little more so it feels like a downward dog. Or just come into child's pose. If you're in downward facing dog, take a couple more breath cycles there. And then to the knees. Two more breaths all together, coming back together in child's pose. You can have your forehead resting fist on fist or the arms can be behind your hips, shoulders rolling around the ears. And then drop it or come over to one side with your legs. Let's take the feet wide and drop the knees over towards the left, or whatever side you're on. And then back through center and take the knees over to the other side. Let's all meet on the left side. And walk it up. So the left hip tucks under a little bit and take a, a twist with your right hand assisting on your left thigh looking out over your left shoulder. And back through center, inhale. And switch, drop the knees over to the other side. You could have your, your back knee could be right up against your, your front heel and that just accentuates the twist a little more, tucking the right bum cheek under and looking over the right shoulder. And then come back to center, take your legs forward and just give them a drumming out, shake it all out. Action. So we're getting towards our, our closing. I want to make sure that we get some time to rest. So you can bring in, if you have some of those goodies around and you'd like to uh, have some extra layers of blanket, if you feel like taking an inversion, it can be something small with a, a pillow underneath your seat, boosting yourself up a little bit there. Or you can have a chair um, to have your, your shins rest on a chair, or you can move in towards a wall or your bed. If you're just on a little bit of a lift of a pillow, then that's a supported bridge posture. Blood's moving back towards the heart. And you might take a leg or two, take the weight off completely and just kind of shake it out and play with your legs up in the air. You don't really need anything if you're doing that, then if you don't have the pillow, just some really loose jiggling and shaking. <sighs> Bring it all back to the heart. And then as you're ready, your legs come down. If you want to stay in the inversion without moving, that's totally a beautiful way to close your practice, to invite some compassion for that heart, that muscle that is working really hard to pump blood and, and to be present to our own stress, or the suffering of others, the collective experience without getting 
super agitated or swept away by it. And so it might be an interesting or helpful as you come to rest here with the eyes closed or softly, not really looking at anything. Just to take your awareness to the heart and literally breathing in through that organ. An organ, both an organ and a muscle. And the seed of compassion. So breathing into the heart from all directions, from all sides, not just the front. Feel that breath coming in through the back of the heart, through the earth, through the sides, through the space, through the front, through the universe. And as you exhale, also exhaling in all directions. Breathing wide, breathing in compassion for yourself. And breathing out compassion towards all other beings. Compassion, friendliness, just a wish that all beings can have some ease. Don't have to be any special feelings attached to this at all. But the science is here on the benefits. Of sending wishes for well being. Out with some mindful intention. As you breathe in, breathing in those same intentions from others, those of us that are here, those of us that would like to be here. Breathing in, compassion from others, and then breathing that back out to all beings. And as we come towards our, our time, if you'd like to stay and rest or continue with the meditation on your own, feel free to do that. If you're ready to move on with your activities for the day, then just do so slowly bringing some small movements back to fingers and toes. The jaw, big stretch of the jaw. Shifting over to one side, the rescue pose, and acknowledge and appreciate yourself for, for the effort. And as you're ready, coming back to sit. With the hands resting in the lap or palms somewhere on the body. Taking a last few breaths together here. Present and just feeling how you're feeling now. Without any judgment, it's not to feel a certain way, but just to, to be aware and to notice how it is. 
Namaste. Thanks, Kathy. That was great. Oh, good. You're so welcome. Have a good weekend, everyone. Okay. You too, Christine. Take care. Mm -hmm. Elaine.